Hey folks, I've been talking about the Google phones and how that changes the experience of having a phone in other videos. But I keep getting asked the question, can I make my existing Google Android safe? And I got a list of suggestions about what someone might do to the Android settings. Let's discuss what some of these suggestions are and see if they work or not. And then I'll give you my solution at the end of the video to make your phone safer your Android phone. By the way, even though I'm talking Android here, some of these thought processes apply to an iPhone as well. So you might as well hear it even if you don't have an Android. Stay tuned. Now here's a list of suggestions that people have made to see if this can impact on privacy Delete or disable Google Play Store. Don't log into Google. Delete all apps. Use a browser only. Turn off Wi-Fi scanning and settings. Remove the SIM card. Use Wi-Fi only. But before we get into that, let's analyze first what the privacy problems are in the standard Google Android phone. Here's the list of privacy problems to think about on a Google Android. Number one, Carrier getting your phone identity. Number two, Wi-Fi scanning. Number three, device fingerprinting. Number four, contact tracing. First item on the list. Number one, carrier getting your phone identity. Now, please, don't ask me this question. It should be clear to you that you put in an identified SIM card. There are KYC, know your customer laws, just about every place to make sure the carrier knows who has the SIM card, even if you paid cash. So this is not part of the privacy issue we can control. Just like I don't believe burner phones give you any safety. If you have a SIM card on your phone, then obviously the carrier knows who's using the phone. And certainly three letter agencies do. However, Usually your identity is known only to the carrier and to the three letter agencies. So this is not typically a direct threat from internet companies like Google. So don't worry about this. If you're Snowden, you already know not to use a phone. If you're just an average person, then move on. Which leads to one of the suggested tips, remove the SIM card and use Wi-Fi only. Well, that actually will work for the Snowden and the John McAfee. I'm sure if they have a phone device, then they don't have a SIM card. Some of you may know that I interviewed John McAfee and definitely he does not have a SIM card. Again, these are not practical tips for the normal person. You can watch my video on burner phones to understand why I don't think any solution will work on SIM cards in a practical way. Okay, let's talk about problem number two, Wi-Fi scanning. Wi-Fi scanning is just the description of the passive portion of the Wi-Fi interactions on your phone, which allow Google to track your location 24 seven. As I explained in other videos, this is when the Wi-Fi routers in the area are scanned and through the use of signal strength, the exact positions of the routers are determined vis-a-vis -vis your current GPS location. So some people look in Android settings and see that there's an option there for Wi-Fi scanning. Their conclusion is that this can be turned off. Well, I can tell you that even on an Android open source project or AOSP, a degoogled phone, the Wi-Fi scanning switch is there as well. Though it is clear that there is no Google source code in there for sending your location data to Google. So clearly there's something else at work with that switch in settings. The problem is that Wi-Fi scanning as a term actually includes Wi-Fi probes, which actively announce your MAC address and then the passive action of location tracking. Thus, it is not clear to me if that switch really turns off the passive location tracking, though it may turn off the Wi-Fi probes. 
Since we have no source code to look at, you have to assume that it can keep going on, especially since this is a passive action. There's no need for any RF signal for the location tracking to occur, so we can't even detect it. There is no way to delete this program that Google uses to track location. Wherever it is, it has overwritten the original code that came from Android open source. So if you have a Google Android, I will make the reasonable guess that location tracking will continue 24 seven, regardless of how you adjust Wi-Fi scanning in settings. However, I would always turn off Wi-Fi scanning in settings. At the very least, it could turn off Wi-Fi probes, which reveals your Mac addresses everywhere. And it also uses up a lot of battery. Just don't expect this to solve the location tracking. Moving on to the next problem, device fingerprinting. Now, device fingerprinting is attaching the locations and other activities on the phone to your actual identity, which is your Google ID. However, understand that this can be combined with other identifiers found on the SIM card like MZ and the phone number and the device has the IMEI and the device serial number as well as MAC addresses. The main identifier though with the Google ID is that typically it is attached to a credit card because of app purchases. So once you've used a phone with a Google ID and it has not been reflashed with a new ROM, then there is no way to undo your Google ID. There's now a record of locations telemetry and a matching Google ID and this matches to a real name on a credit card. So let's say you reset the phone to factory and don't log into Google. Then you think this is pretty safe now since there's no Google ID. Except the phone was used before with a matching IMEI MZ phone number, serial number, MAC address. So a simple extrapolation will reveal the original owner. This would be trivial to a Google. This is what I call indexing. You've been indexed by another data point. So in isolation, the device serial number, IMEI, MZ, and phone number and MAC address may not be meaningful, but when looked at historically, it can reveal other data. So you can see that this procedure of not logging into Google can only be useful on a new purchased phone, whether it's be used or new. And there are more issues. You cannot use Google Play at all, so all apps have to be sideloaded, and that means all apps. But the temptation is there since Google Play Store exists. It would be possible to load the Aurora Store and use that on a standard Android, but since Gaps is installed, all the telemetry for all the Aurora Store apps are going to go to Google. There's no way to turn that off. Next problem is contact tracing. Last May, both Apple and Google modified their OSs, and this was in GAPS, Google Apps, for Android so that contact tracing is enabled. The code is built into the OS itself, so if you don't want to participate in this, you can't really escape. And not because of the Bluetooth parts of contact tracing, which is actually a cover, but the issue with contact tracing is in the 24-7 location tracking present in Wi-Fi scanning which as we talked about, cannot be turned off. Okay, let me summarize where we are so far on a Google Android phone. Number one, it is my analysis that location tracking cannot be turned off. So if I'm walking around with an Android phone with gaps, then I have to assume that my locations are recorded. Now you can go to Google Activity Controls on their website and tell Google not to track your locations. It's up to you to decide if you trust this. And personally, I look at this permission as related to Wi-Fi triangulation, which is the permission tracking done by apps. I think this is different than the tracking in Wi-Fi scanning. In Wi-Fi scanning, you are tracked with your GPS, not directly, but it's metadata related to spotting Wi-Fi routers. So Google could say this is different, even though your location can be extrapolated just the same. Number two, though you can get a phone that you don't log into, there are some identifiers that the OS has access to, like the IMEI, which is permanent, 
and the device serial number and the MAC addresses, which are also permanent. And some data that is not permanent, like the IMZ and phone number from the SIM card. So, not logging into a Google Android phone is not foolproof. However, it does seem like you can do a factory reset, disable the Google Play Store, install an alternate store like F-Droid and Aurora Store, and not install anything from Google Play. The problem with this is that the Google telemetry, which is part of GAPS, is still there. So, notifications go through Google directly and the device ID is tracked. Google telemetry monitors your app usage and handles things like notifications and location services. And that will continue. So, it's a partial solution, but not totally eliminating the device fingerprint. 3. Contact tracing, as I said earlier, is tied to location tracking using Wi-Fi scanning. So, as long as location tracking can occur, non-voluntary contact tracing can be done. However, without a Google ID, at least your precise identity is not revealed. So, in conclusion, you can make a Google Android phone partially safe by obscuring an identity and eliminating possibly some of the identity from a device fingerprint, specifically the Google ID. As I made clear, this is not 100%. It is more effective if done on a newly purchased phone, old or new. All you need to do are these steps. Number one, do a factory reset. Number two, turn off Wi-Fi scanning in settings. Number three, disable the Google Play Store. Number four, install F-Droid Store. Number five, install Aurora Store from F-Droid. Number six, Use the Aurora Store to get apps and not from the Google Play Store. Number seven, never enter your Google ID. Number eight, use the browser for dangerous apps like Facebook. This is nowhere as safe as a de Google phone, by the way, because the de Google phone has no location tracking, no device fingerprinting. But it's a start. A de Google phone has no location tracking. And you can be 100% certain of that. A de Google phone does not have to report to the Google home base. There's no telemetry and the device identifiers like MZ, IMEI, serial numbers, MAC addresses are not reported to Google. But I understand that some of you are on a budget and temporarily you may want an immediate privacy solution. So this is my way of helping you. Now, if you have an iPhone, there is no solution for you. None of these steps here would work on an iPhone. There is no way to sideload apps or have an F-Droid or anything like that. Unfortunately, iOS is a dead end to privacy. I realize this is a complex issue to explain and it probably is best to get some background by watching my de-googled phone videos as well. This will make the issues clearer especially if you are unfamiliar with some of the terms I use, like F-Droid and the Aurora Store. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell.